So, uh, yes, we are live. My name is Abin Asim Mahmood. I am from Multan, Pakistan, South Asia. And uh, today uh, we are we came another panel discussion with the uh, amazing leading ladies which are leading in their sectors of in their country. So uh, the purpose of this uh, conversation is getting to know each other, sharing stories and getting support and uh, help each other. So I'm so happy that uh, Carla Richman is here from USA. Carla, uh, I will, uh, uh, Carly, and I will also, <laughs> Carla, Carly? Yes. Mon yes. Uh, Montgomery. I guess um, I, I need help and assistance to pronounce your name correctly. She's here, she joined us. Thank you so much. And Nisa is here. So guys, how are you? Good. Okay. I'm doing great, thank you. And okay, Nisa, how are you? Okay, it's okay. So thank you so much, Carla Richman, that you gave the time, and Carla, you also. Um, uh, I uh, my first uh, question is that uh, I want to know your introduction, um, so the other people get to know, and we get to know each other. So Carla, Carla, we. Oh, this is going to be confusing, the... Carla and Carly. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, my, uh, I'm originally from California. I live in Central America now, and I'm working on humanitarian projects, one of them being to uh, plant food for everyone. So we're planning community and family gardens around the, the community here, and we've already spread into the town next door. Um, I have three businesses. Uh, one is a design uh, creative agency working with uh, digital content and property. Uh, sorry, guys, I'm back. I'm back. Hi. <laughs> we all like I suffer from I, that might be me next. I suffer from a, a slow Internet here, too. Um, my other projects, I have an online gallery that we uh, do pop up art and public spaces. Uh, I work with art walks and um, public installations like murals and sculptures. And my final business is Boho Trader. It's a um, artisan goods for the home and slow fashion, uh, mostly made here in Guatemala. And um, yeah, that's about it. Okay, we go to Kala Richman and Kala, yes. What do you want to tell the world <laughs> about you? Um, that's an interesting <laughs> question. Um, Carla Richman, I have been hosting the Learn English by Speaking English show for almost three years now, believe it or not, and have helped people feel comfortable speaking English. I also host Rehan's work. Rehan Alawal's world of connections where I speak to different people around the world about their life and their passions. And um, that's me. I know Kala and her journey, the way uh, she started and now the, uh, where she is doing. So we will talk about more. And firstly, I want like, Nisa, you should introduce yourself and uh, yes. Uh, I'm a food technologist and a marketer. I did my MBA in marketing. So uh, after serving 9.5 years, approximately 9.5 years in the industry in different leading multinational companies and FMCGs, I just started a year or so you know, back, I started my own business, which is chocolate manufacturing. You know, everybody loves chocolate. So I decided to hmm. manufacture chocolate here in Pakistan. So it's a very good quality, you know, more uh, matching to the international standard. So that's what we are producing here. And you know, recently we started our online business in this Corona time in COVID COVID nineteen. So it's 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 so far it's so good. Okay, thank you so much, guys. So that's about and, it. Uh, okay, okay, that's great. And uh, the other two ladies uh, will join us as their internet connection will be stable. Uh, so. 
I want to tell about mm-hmm. myself. Like I just started my journey uh, one and a half or two years ago. I started taking interviews to the people and connecting to the world by my mentor. Mm-hmm. He, uh, my mentor name is uh, Rehan Alawala, and he is a social entrepreneur. You can like we all connected by him as well. So <laughs> the journey when I I have worked. Uh, <laughs> yeah, somehow we are we all are connected to him. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and. Yes, so he is the I th- I think he is the main person, key person who connected us, you know. Yes. And yeah, so uh, when I I worked uh, like I interviewed lot of males, and I I find out that my work like I didn't work for especially for women, and didn't take their interviews, and didn't converse have a conversation with them. Then I came the idea in this year April, and I thought that I should launch this project, the leading woman. and the purpose of this project is like i have a dream that one day my company will be the unicorn and uh, it will be the like uh, a well well known company like it's about training and uh, development and lead, about leadership trainings so i thought that why should not i share it with other ladies and we have the consent uh, that they are also working in their cities and their countries and why not we collectively dream that one day will be will, will be at that level and then i share this idea and philosophy to other ladies they they started like it and they started like joining me okay we will do work uh, and support each other and this in this way it just started from april so till now i have uh, 300 ladies three, more than 300 ladies in my network and we are working in the group mm-hmm. the leading women group and there are uh, 30 more than 34 ladies that i introduce one by one from the different countries and they are from uh, uh, 10 10 countries so it is evolving and i am hopeful that uh, uh, with that uh, phase when we go further we'll do virtual conference one thing and then we will go for partnership and mm-hmm. collaboration like because we get uh, at that moment we get to know each other and have talked to uh, each other so uh, this is about a little bit about uh, the platform and uh, this is about a little bit my, my passion mm-hmm. that i think that if we have dream we should share it with others and we have collect we have the collective dreams and share one another stories so the main purpose today is hearing your story like how you are inspiring in your community and what are your own vision and your i think uh her internet is a issue i guess yeah yeah so why don't we just keep going uh <laughs> do you want to uh, me so with the uh, um with what your story is ah uh, okay so I'll let's start maybe on. you know rabia will uh, i mean maybe her internet will catch up and she'll come back so <laughs> uh, let me start my story uh see uh, carla and uh, carle you both have similar names right so yeah. uh, my story is very simple see i i belong to a typical middle class family you know which which we don't have uh, so much of resources see uh, sorry uh, sorry we just started i i am starting my story uh, so is that fine with you rabia okay so uh, see i belong to a typical middle class family you know which uh, which is uh, like you know uh, we have to uh, strive for what we need to achieve in life so always right so uh, see things are not easy for me from the start from the beginning from the very beginning right so uh, i um, uh, started studying and you know after this metric and inter i i you know intermediate education i i wa- i wanted to be a doctor uh, see i wanted wanted to be in medical field but somehow i didn't make it uh, and private education was far more expensive at that time i couldn't afford it so i skipped that idea of being a doctor and to go into the medical field and i just you know uh, uh, was searching for alternative so i started uh, you know career counseling and something like that you know somebody you know he guided me well and he said that you should you know go in a field which is not saturated enough so 
i decided to enter into this food technology which was actually emerging at that time and back in 2010 i did my masters in you know msc in food science and technology at that time it was a new field you know uh, like in an industry we need people who are food technologists you know who know more about food and this technology so somebody guided me well you know he did very good counseling and i just ended up you know having this degree in food science after that you know i started my career in one of the leading multinational company at that time dalda foods you might have heard the name dalda uh, jahan mamta wahan dalda it's quite popular in the country as well and in this all south asia region you know it's very popular so uh, there you know i started very entry level kind of job you know as a technical officer with 19 and a half thousand rupees as in first salary so uh, that was you know quite uh, uh you can see uh, it was a, already accomplishment for me that you know i have achieved something because you know uh, i studied on my own and you know uh, i i strive for this job and i just got it and and you know it, it was quite well i was doing well in the job and after 5 years i have learned a lot from that uh, from that organization because it it teach me a lot they send me for training you know Uh, in dubai also in pakistan also like different iso training different erp trainings i did in dalda food so it grew me uh, a lot there you know and then uh, i started uh, you know i i got a opportunity to join another multinational which is ue based multinational company ifco pakistan so uh, from there i got an offer uh, to you know uh, to join uh, there as an quality assurance manager but again you know there is a twist in that job also when i go for the interview they said you are an quite an extrovert type of a person why are you trying to get this job of quality assurance why don't you join us in marketing department you know like you know sales and marketing uh, uh, department which is uh, again their segment industrial sales so they asked me to join that department uh, previously i was having zero experience in marketing and sales but they offered me that position which is uh, quite uh, a very uh, important department in their organization so they asked me to join there so i asked them for uh, some time to decide and just get back to them <laughs> so i guess there is internet problem with anisa uh, but uh, it is yes. yeah it is going it is going to be a new experience for me because you know i i spent almost 5 years already in a field which is quality assurance r and d technical and analytical stuff so you know with zero experience in marketing and you know entering into something with so i think this is a common problem that we can face uh the internet <laughs> disconnections but we'll uh, like uh, I, i just uh, i think that we should wait for the nisa as in, uh, her internet connection we go on uh, goes good so khale akhala i want to know your journey like uh, um, your journey like because i have seen your journey and the way you grow the way you ha- now you have the giggle fest uh, as a platform and the uh, english foundation you make the english foundation as a like and you're working on the website how things growing when you started i know you emotionally as well i know myself emotionally i was i as well when we have started you know kala long journey so what what do you think that where did you like now at that place uh, do you feel that things improved you have done lot of work you uh, send your message to lo- lot of people like what do you think i'm not sure what you're asking me um okay when i okay. first met mm-hmm. you i was kind of <laughs> a little not sure what was going to happen i still don't know what's going to happen but i met you at the beginning not even the beginning i had been doing the english show for a little while 
at that point. And I was getting to feel very comf comfortable with it. Um, Rayhan was definitely supporting everything I was doing. So I kind of moved on quickly as far as beginning to do it, interviews. When I first began the English show, I thought it was the most silly idea in the world but I was willing to give it a try. Um, not sure why Rayhan wanted it done, but you know, why not spend a little time talking to people and it came uh, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry, this internet really sucks. I am not, I'm not sure either is it going to work for the rest of the uh, conversation or, or not, I'm not sure. We never know anything for sure from one moment. We only have this moment. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Her, now that she has internet connection, do you want her to finish her story and come back to me? Uh, as you like, Carla. If you, if you feel that she should continue, that you, uh, you should allow her. We can allow her to talk when she has an internet connection. We don't know how often she'll have it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Nisa. So we are okay. listening to Carla's so, story. And, uh, uh -huh. yes. Uh, and after listening to her, and then I'll ask you the questions, like, uh, about your journey. Okay. Okay, so Carla will continue first. No, no issue at all. Okay. No, no, no. You may lose your internet connection again. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, okay, okay, fine. So I was I was there at IFCO, right? At IFCO, I was there, right? Okay, so I'm just continuing from there. So I, I just got that offer and somehow I, you know, I am actually, you know, I love to take challenges in life, you know. So whenever I've, I've been asked to do something which is uh, undoable, so I, I love to do that and I just want to give it a try always. So uh, for me, picking that job of IFCO Pakistan was again a challenge and I just took it as a challenge and I accepted and I did really well. And that is how, you know, I, land, I ended up, uh, you know, in something which is new to me, which is sales, marketing and, you know, altogether a different journey started from IFCO. So that actually, you know, at that time, I was, my MBA was also going on, which is, MBA in marketing so at that time you know I realized that uh, you know I I think I, I should do something of my own which is you know uh, which is again you know which give me satisfaction and every everybody know that you know own business is own business you know why you uh, waste your energies to to grow other businesses so you should learn and you should uh, move on and just start your own business. So that idea was pretty much there in the mind. But to me, I think I was not that much capable at that time because, you know, I was such a naive person because, see, only having five years of experience. So I decided at that time that, you know, after a few years, few more years of experience, maybe I can uh, someday, uh, you know, start something of my own. So I spent uh, three and a half years approx in uh, IFCO Pakistan. And again, I had a very good exposure and experience there, uh, both international and national. So I, I learned new things and sales and marketing things. And by that time, my MBA degree was also completed, which I started back then in 2010 when I was uh, in, Dalda, in Dalda Foods. So uh, it was completed. And, you know, somehow I, I that at that time i realized that you know now i should uh, you know start something of my own so after switching from uh, ifco to some organization again that's an, another ch challenging job at that time because you know they were starting a very new business from the scratch you know they were registered as a firm seriously i mean they they were not into the food business but they are just starting their food segment and i was the one who who just uh, you know uh, go there and establish their food business somehow i managed to do that but at the time when i was switching ifco people were like you you are crazy you 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 don't even realize that what are you doing with your life because you know you should not uh, quit a very uh, secure job 
uh, for the one which is uncertain you never know what what is going to happen with you and your future but again i took it as a challenge and i did really well and that time i i realized that you know if something from scratch i can do and i can make it work then why not my own business so at that time you know i was very certain in my mind that you know i need to do it but like i said thank you uh, but like i said uh, that you know uh, keeping in mind and you know uh, having this background of a typical medical middle class family that you know i have a excuse uh, like you know i don't have enough resources how can i start my own business it need finances it need capital it need a, a lot more things right so uh, still then i decided to uh, you know take it as a risk at, as a challenge and i i you know find out uh, the ways to make it happen and somehow i manage it and you see i started my manufacturing setup of chocolate which is in korangi industrial area and alhamdulillah it's doing really good uh, really well about you know one and a half year like one 1.3 years you know back i started it and alhamdulillah it's going really good and uh, i'm i'm loving it and see uh, always remember that you know irrespective what your gender is irrespective what your circumstances is what your financial background is just believe in yourself and you can do anything so it's just a believe it's just you know to to cross that barrier in your mind the barrier is in the mind only nothing like that you know so if you if you can just um, uh, you know pass that surpass that uh, barrier you can do anything in life that's my belief either you are girl women whatever you know you can do it so that's my small story i just try to summarize it before the internet gone again <laughs> it's so beautiful uh, nisa listen to you and uh, you, you are so passionate i really like your energy that uh, what you are doing you are enjoying and you are loving it because it's no yeah. most necessary that whatever mm-hmm. we what, what what things we choose to do we uh, do it with a whole of our love then i think we may exactly it, uh, i give my heart it. to my work that's that i really yeah, like that's the energy. main thing yeah yes i really like your thank you thank you thank so, you yes. so so going now, back to carla yes before you go back to me i have a question is your chocolate yes. um being exported internationally no no not not yet carla like i said it's just one one and 1.3 years so far you know oh. uh, i started so it's just one uh, one year. right now i'm not in the plan to export it but what my plan is to to actually capture this pakistani market because most of us you know most of the pakistani people they are more interested in the imported chocolate you know they are imported salborn bad she's gone <laughs> she's amazing i guess she is, she has lot of energy and i really like her energy okay khada tell us like uh, about your journey when you are started and where you are today what do you feel about your own self and your work i'm growing um i never thought anyone would be interested in speaking to me in english and i found that i was wrong because thousands of people are reached every day i do a show um and people ask me to interview them so you know there's a lot of growth going on a lot of confidence building um i'm not sure what to say to be honest um Kala did you feel that you look more younger even the even the year pass did you feel that say that again did you feel that your energy changes you look more younger uh, uh, active and tell us your story like you when rehan met you you didn't even walk and now you are walking and now you have like in uh, in like 
um, I think that people are so rigid to learn new things, but you are the example for a lot of the people, like how we adopt technology, how we take it in our lives. Tell us whole. When I see your journey, I see that there's a huge change, huge accomplishments. <laughs> really? No, I do better, Rabia, I do better when people ask me questions. Um, I'm not sure how to answer that. It's been a journey. When I first met Ray Han, I was a retired teacher from DCPS. It was a rather shock that I, I wasn't planning on leaving my teaching job, but I had a principal who was very discriminatory. And I was discriminated against, and not only for being older, for being white, you name it. He just didn't like me, and it was a very difficult year for me. And Rayhan began following me after I had started a series of one-minute, two-minute videos on called the daily it was the daily something or another daily giggle of the day and i'd come in and i'd laugh and i'd give a tiny bit of knowledge and i'd get get off uh and the daily quote of the day and that's how ray Han found me and on my birthday that year he sent me a video birthday witch and i thought what you know who does that for what man does that for someone they don't know at all because he really didn't know me we had only one conversation and we began talking that day and two weeks later we i was starting the the language class um did i think it would work no yes carla tell me that when you have decided that you will teach people uh english and there are a lot and lot of people who came uh, from this day one and you told me one day like uh, it's not an english show this is like uh, uh helping people to uh change their uh belief system to help them to get to know each other on your platform from different countries like yeah it mm -hmm. it wasn't really teaching english it was helping them gain the confidence to go live or to be able to speak to someone even you rabia when you first came you you know you were like oh what am i doing here and in time, you were beginning to feel comfortable speaking English. So it it's a growth. It's a development of people for who they are and what they're about. I think I answered your question, but yeah, I do you. not. <laughs> I just want to know your whole story because it, it expands uh, because we are also connected from the last two uh, years, I guess. Three. Uh, guys, guys Kale and Nisa, when uh, Karda was doing the English show, I was joining her as a co-host. And I, 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 I was there to learn English as well. And the way she grows over the period of time, I feel that she walk on, the, on her health. She walk on her relationships. She walk on her network. There are a lot of people around the world who knows her now she established her uh, um, english foundation which is initially started just as english show and she is so persistent persistent with her work i know that i uh, sometimes i just started the live videos and i then uh, uh, i didn't uh, didn't continue it for the some time being take rest but she is the one she didn't take leave she is just continuous working so tell us about carla it's not easy for people to be persistent and stick to the job. So how you manage? There are a lot of difficulties that you face. I know that 
there is a zoom problem there is a internet problem so how you managed this is i guess i learned from my parents once we make a commitment we stick to it my family has always been very committed to the work they do and my father was an orthodontist in philadelphia very well known and we had this work ethic you work hard or you don't do it and i grew up with that ethic you know whatever i did i give it my 100% you know i don't see it as anything special i see it as something that you just do you know it's not there's no question if you say you're going to do something you do it mm -hmm. and you and i have had our moments about that one <laughs> but, um, you know that's what it is to me okay kala tell me one thing like and then we will go to kale tell me one thing when you have started your journey what what are your feelings at that moment and now you have come so far what did you, what are your feelings when i first feel? began and ray had asked me to do it i thought he was a crazy man i still do but um <laughs> be honest he is hmm. but as we kept on working on this together i saw it open and as long as it was helping people and people were growing from it i mm -hmm. wanted to do it mm -hmm. um the first success story was how it is called who wanted to pass the test so he could get a, a promotion in his job in dubai and his test was like two weeks later very little time to do it and he came to the show and he came to the show very regularly and we spoke to him and one of the team members spoke to him off camera and he passed and he gave me credit for it but he did the work you know maybe i motivated him but he's the one who did the work just like you you did the work and you grew too okay my heart is saying that i should ask you <laughs> what did you feel about yourself when you started the journey and now what are you feeling about yourself like when i started my journey i don't know about that like what i am going to do with this network i just asking my teacher that i want to build a training and consultancy company now i have this network i feel about myself like it's good that you when uh, you talked and managed there are a lot of the, the, the lot of people around you you feel that okay now you have the expertise to deal how to deal how to balance your emotions little lot of things so i have a question for you how do you feel about yourself kala when you started is that uh, like uh, at that moment you were confused but now how you feel what are the feelings you are feeling good <laughs> um i think we learn every day i don't think that we come up with a decision of what we are at any point every day it changes i have moments when i think oh my gosh why am i doing this for 3 years it's not getting me where i wanted to go, get me and then i look at the panelists who come and come to the show and i realize hey people are getting something from this it's a growing process it changes daily it changes by the moment I'm committed to it because I know that people are growing from it and people are getting the confidence to do what they need to do. That makes me feel really good. Um and there are times where I think, "Uh, oh, this is doing nothing for anyone and why do I continue doing it?" 
And right as I begin to think that, I see a change. I look at the change in my followers on Facebook. Ray Han reminded me, and I don't know how he knew this, but he checked it out. He said, you started with maybe 3,000 followers. Now you have, now I have over 14,000 followers. Um, I started with maybe a few hundred friends. Now I have to delete people in order to add new people. And with what I do, it's really important for me to delete them so I can interview others. So, um, you know, yeah, there's growth. And yes, there's development. And I guess I'm not used to talking about myself on air. And I need to get over it and begin to move to be able to talk about it. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> okay, Kala. Uh, actually, I, 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 I know your journey. Uh, so I thought that I should ask. There are a lot of questions that I will ask you uh, um, again. But for uh, I want to move to Kale. Kale, like you have told your introduction in, in the starting. But like what inspires you to come in this network and what did you observe and what's your story like how you are inspiring in your community um i just i feel like i've told my full life story so many times lately on these interviews so we can fast forward to um i was living in costa rica for since 2015 i moved out of the united states and moved to central america and um over that time period, I really started to wake up consciously about what I was doing in the world and realizing that I wasn't really happy if I wasn't having purpose, right? Like we can make a bunch of money, that's great. I can spend a bunch more and it doesn't really do you any good, you know? I got really passionate at first about getting people off of trash and plastic and um, reusing containers and things like that. I probably was a little bit before my time because now there's all these no plastic shops opening up and um and selling bulk goods and herbal medicine and alternatives to the chemical laden body products and house um household chemicals that we use so much so that was like my first social activism thing and that's how boho trader got started actually it um now evolved into artisan goods but that was my first go at that and then i i was a developer in the states developing real estate and i I got really conscious about ripping into the earth and just our our footprint on the earth and how we, uh, in LA, a lot of my work was remodeling. So it was a lot of trash. We were generating tons of trash. We weren't recycling. It was all going to the landfill. Um, now coming to Costa Rica, it was, you know, destroying beautiful nature to put in, um, to put in houses and clear lots for, for land. Um, and I was just falling out of alignment with what I was doing. So I took a couple of years and just kind of worked on myself and got clear about what my passions and goals were in the world. And the more clear I got, the less I could um, settle for doing the work I was doing before, which was just straight design work, interiors, architectural, landscape design and remodeling and stuff. So um, let's see, fast forward to so I've worked now on a few wellness properties, working to create spaces that people could go to. The biggest thing is, is like, we're gonna save the world, we gotta save humanity. And once people start healing themselves, they'll get the, the call to heal the planet. So I started creating spaces for people to retreat to, um, to get out of these, I should say these unhealthy lifestyles, these unhealthy environments that we've either created for ourselves or are just indoctrinated into and don't even realize they're not that healthy. Um, from that, I I then moved down to Guatemala. It was kind of, um, yeah, I just was ready to move on. Costa Rica, um, I, I discovered Guatemala and all the artisans here and all these amazing, uh, all the amazing culture and stuff. And I really wanted to start working with the artisans in Guatemala 
to help them get their products to market. And a couple ways I saw myself helping them was to uh, introduce the trends of today. Like I work in interior designing, so I pay attention to the international uh, space of what's trending right now and um, the colors and things like that. Like they're making beautiful quality products, but the colors were really harsh. Like the color combinations weren't really working. And um, and then some of the styles, it's like, yeah, you're making these great products, but people haven't worn that stuff since like the eighties, you know? <laughs> so um, I worked on that. And then I worked on helping just people get to market. And none of this was done pretty much under a brand or anything. I was just walking around helping who I, who I could. Um, fast forward to today, I came back to Guatemala right before COVID shut everything down. And as everything was shutting down, my project in Costa Rica had a wellness property there, got shut down. It was at the beach and like, we just weren't able to do business anymore. And I, the only thing that could hit me is like plant food people. Like my, my employees were all getting laid off. I had to, and they're like, what do I do? What do I do? I'm like, go plant food. Like just plant your garden. Like we don't know what's going to happen right now. Like Oh, shoot. Can you guys still see me? Oh, there we are. So, yes. um, sorry, I'm, I'm suffering the same problems as Nisa. Um, <laughs> so okay. once I got here, I got invited to help on a project that really hit home for me, and that's called Huertos para Toros. And what that is, is just planning, planning gardens for people, helping people, um, educating people on how to grow food, helping them with resources to get gardens planted. And we actually go in and help, like physically help them. We install the garden for them. If they don't have land at their house. We help uh, network into the community to find a piece of land that's not being used and work with the owner to cre create an agreement with the family to, um, yeah, to um, get, get food planted. Um, with that, I'm creating a vivero, which is a nursery here on my property that I'm living on. Uh, with a tire space, which is workshops. So we can teach people how to grow. Uh, we have a demo garden here. I'm gonna have like a little um, co-working area so people can come here and work together on different projects. And all of this, I, I got linked up with this beautiful cryptocurrency called Seeds. Uh, I've become an ambassador for it. And basically it's a whole ecosystem of uh, supported by this cryptocurrency that regenerates the planet. And I'm so passionate about this because if we don't address our currency, we're going to have a really hard, oh, that's a fly. Isn't that cute? <laughs> um, <laughs> welcome to the Guatemala. <laughs> he was trying to get in the show, you know? Um, so I feel like if we don't address our currency, the currencies that we're using now, these fiat currencies, they're backed by oil, they're backed by destruction. <clears throat> they're backed by, you know, environmental degeneration and this cryptocurrency it backs anything that's doing to support the environment the people economic opportunities every project that i'm doing i've been able to fit into the uh, ecosystem of seeds so i'm super passionate about that and if anyone here is interested in knowing more today um, send me a message i'll hook them up with a few seeds open their account and check it out so that's where i'm at today that's great <coughs> And there is like a little bit art piece behind you. What's that? Oh, that's one of the artists I worked with a couple of years ago. Um, we did a show here in, Coast, in Guatemala for him. Uh, I work heavily with artists. Um, a lot of my initiatives right now, like the uh, initiative I'm working on in Costa Rica is, and here actually I have the same initiative in the town that I was living in and the town that I'm living in now is to create an art park and um, to produce more public installations of art to regenerate the town. So I really feel like uh, art is a great medium in which to increase the cultural value of a space, of a town, of a people. And um, so I do a lot of different things. This, this artist, his name's Vajra. Uh, it's altaroftheheart.com if you're interested in looking at more of his work. He's a visionary artist. Visionary art has been um, really not recognized as mainstream art for its existence. And I think that's where we need to be shining the light on right now is visionary art. I mean, these guys are really showing us the future. Um, artists are our sages, I feel. And um, this piece is called Man in the Middle. It's 
really okay. yeah okay so. okay i want uh, i uh, we will also want to see the garden and co-working space like how you're working you said that your industry is just in front of you your the garden, garden? yeah <laughs> how do you know i had a garden <laughs> you said oh, that oh gosh so yeah. um okay here's so i live outside i mean i have a mm -hmm. little uh, shack mm -hmm. and um i'm all tied up here so this is the garden that I planted when I first got here. So I have garden beds in the background there. Okay. And um, over here, are some more garden beds behind the lime tree. And then mm -hmm. down this pathway is a whole bunch more garden. And we're um, there's uh, five houses on the property. We're remodeling um, the older houses and we're planning to build a couple tiny houses here, which is super exciting. I have a design mm -hmm. already to go. And we'll be mm -hmm. um, designing wow. that soon, or building that soon. Um, I first want to get the demo gardens finished mm -hmm. and the um, nursery mm -hmm. building or the structure set up mm -hmm. to do the tires and um, mm -hmm. and then yeah. So I, I have a we're we're planning to do a little video content on the remodels and the building. I think people mm -hmm. love that. It's like HGTV, you know. Mm -hmm. So. It will be great because you know the COVID situation um, make us make us understand that uh, we should change our priorities for mm -hmm. for a lot of the other things that we are focusing to necessities that are the actually needs of us to survive survive. So it's good yeah. that we, people are pivoting their businesses and focusing on other basic necessities rather than going out and to do an experience in a new field. You know. So it's really important. Okay, guys, uh, what do you think that uh, the woman power is uh, like? I I think um, how you see uh, yourself as a woman. Do you feel that if we we come we connected in our network and we tell our stories to the to the other ladies, we can work together for the more better one to support each other and help each other. So how you see the woman empowerment or or how you see your own self like the woman. What can she do? There are a lot of questions that I have asked. I have a I have a piece on this. Mm -hmm. So I do a lot of work with sacred sexuality and um, masculine, the sacred masculine, sacred feminine work, um, and the energies. So we're balanced. We we both have a masculine and feminine side to us, right? So how do we embrace more of our feminine side to uh, be more impactful in the world um, versus like this masculine driven side? So in business, oftentimes women have taken on this very masculine role. This was always my case, like super driven. Nisa, she's like, yeah, <laughs> like super driven. This is how we do it. This is business, you know, like, let's go. Um, but we don't need to. Like if we really embra embrace the feminine, the feminine is more to attract, to um, kind of cultivate the soil and let things grow instead of this masculine, let's go build something, you know? Um, and so it's really honoring our sacred feminine aspects and utilizing the power of the feminine. You know, a lot of the, I think a lot of the, oh gosh, persecution of the feminine has been because the masculine is terrified of how powerful we are. And if we, it's not about doing for us, it's about sitting back and allowing. Um, and I say that, and it's the hardest thing for me to do. I know it works, but I'm still up every morning at 4 a.m. driven like no other to get things done, you know? So how do we embrace that feminine quality and utilize that in ways to make change in the world? Okay, it's, it's very uh, like, uh, yes, Carla want to say something. I want to add to that. I think women have always been told you cannot do this because you're a woman. You need to be there barefoot and pregnant and taking care of the kids. But if you look at the countries right now who are having the most success when it comes to clearing out COVID-19 problems, having no success in their countries being 
more guided and more, I'm trying to find the right words, but more into an equality in the world. They all have leaders who are women. They work, women tend to be able to listen a little more intensively without worrying about, is that going guy going to hear me? We're not likely to start a war because we don't want to see our children going out and being killed. We're more likely to let go of emotions, whereas men say, I don't have any emotions. I think, but we need to be gentle with men. I'm not saying that we should go out and say, hey, you're you're an idiot and we want to get rid of you because men are very important in the world. But I think it's a growth important to a certain point. I agree. I saw your face, Carly, and it was perfect for what I was thinking too. But, you know, we have to give them their importance, but our importance also needs to be recognize these days and I think it's going to take some time but it's beginning to happen now and I think like we have a chocolate maker here I love that idea we have Carly here women need to realize that they can do more for the world than taking care of children because think, they don't only take care of the children, they take care of the whole house. They kind of distribute jobs to everyone. I mean, a woman is extremely powerful. And there is no woman who can say, I cannot do it. Every woman can do it. I was speaking to a lady the other day who said, something and I looked at her and I said, but you're very important in your home. You take care of the kids, the cleaning, the blah, blah, blah. And she said, uh, you're right. And this woman has a lot of kids and I'm like, you're powerful, accept who you are. And when you accept who you are, you're going to be able to give more to the world. My two cents. Hmm. Deep, Kala. So, Nisa, what do you think about like the woman? See, uh, uh, like Carla said, like Carly said. See, we we women we don't even actually by by now we don't even realize what our real strength is. We don't realize what what we can do. So the realization is lacking. See. They, they think, like, I'm talking about the majority, not about the Western world. I'm talk talking about the region where I live, like in Asia. You know, they think that, yeah, we are just good for uh, good for our kids. And, you know, we can just take care of home. We can do laundry. We can cook. We can do, you know, the, the, the household work, the chores, what we call it, right? So they don't realize the, the actual potential, what, what, we, what we can do. So that is the thing which is lacking, like, you know, the people like us, like you, me, like Carly, you know, we should come, uh, come across such people and we, we can, we can, you know, let them know their actual potential is, you know, they, they can do anything like, you know, the other gender is doing, why, why they are thinking that. The mindset, the barrier is in the mind that, you know, we cannot do it. Because, you know, we are born and brought up in certain gender. Like, you know, we are female and we cannot do it and we are not capable to do it, right? So they should realize that, you know, in the time which we are living now. So in, in this time, both the genders, like, see, emotional quotient, which is strong in women, intelligent quotient, which, you know, people believe that, you know, in males, you know, they... they they are street smart. They 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 know the situation better. They they handle the situation better. So you know, if we have a team, you know, like males, females, the group of people, you know, which which have both the gender, so they can do even you know better for society and for you know. 
for the community so they can do it so they have all potential but just need of realization is lacking they don't realize what their actual potential is so they can do anything if if they are allowed to or okay, uh, free to, to do anything so uh so that's my i point. listen to you all like uh, khali said about the feminine and the masculine uh masculine uh, the theory that he she uh, understands and uh, i guess uh, uh, in this year uh, in march in march i was searching about it masculine and feminine powers and i get to know about like what are the masculine energy and what are the feminine energy and how we can heal ourselves through our own energies and it's really right i think we we should explore new things to understand to this world more i really like your concept father and uh, the healing i i will ask you about the, the healing as you told me i guess you are the friend of eliki she also working yeah that's why you have the energy like her as well so yeah so khala is also contributed like uh, we have to be genuine and accept ourselves the, the, the like was you said that when we know ourselves and uh, nisa uh, and then we can do better so khali my question is that like um, um in this world uh irrespective of the area that i am living i think that the women face this thing all over the world that there are some certain rules and you have you if you are a woman you have to do this and if you are a man you have to do this and uh, uh like how we can uh heal ourselves all all the noises which are not our how uh, the the youngsters uh will listen their self their own voice especially women or the girls what do you think that how they heal, heal through healing power i might push a couple buttons with this one cuz um i really feel like religion is a as a big play in this so it's our cultural beliefs and our societal beliefs i grew up in the united states where we are very free and i've been really getting to know a lot of people in in muslim countries now and um and then i'm also been here in a very catholic um country i'm all about spirituality i'm all about god i'm all about um having a deeper connection to source and everything I feel like these rules that are dreamed up by religion have only been made to control and indoctrinate us and with that um it's very patriarchal and has been used to squash uh liberties for a lot of people like not just feminine um but just people in general like it's astounding to me the amount of murder and and like crime and things that are done in the name of things that are read in a bible or a quran or a or a religious text um but i really hope that people in this time get away from religion and more to the spirituality that has brought them into the religion right like um and notice that those rules and those things that that we follow or that we think are um so important are actually if you go back down to like natural law like what what we should be to be humane and civil to each other is where we should really be focusing on and in our own spirituality and not necessarily a religious doctrine or text and the same thing goes with not just religion but government you know these govern the government laws that we have in a lot of countries are really um draconian and nowadays even in the united states they're starting to feel this is that our governments are not there for our best interest the laws that we have right now and they're getting worse they're becoming more stifling on our freedoms um so yeah religion I guess there is an internet problem, but I think we understand that she is uh, trying to say. Karla is about to go. Karla, uh, what are the last message I just get, and then I, I can conclude that. What are your last message for women? I think women need to feel confident in themselves. 
There was a woman I interviewed maybe a week or two ago who had such great ideas, but she said, how can I go on air? And she did, came on with me and she did extremely well. And I was very impressed by her. So I think when women get the confidence to be who they are and not be held back because someone said, you got to be this way, there'll be a lot of more growth and movement in the directions we need to be. Lisa, what is the last message? I guess, yes, La the last message, Nisa, that you want to give for women. Uh, I just want all women to, to realize what their real potential is and irrespective, irrespective of what people say about you, talk about you on your back, just do whatever you feel good at, you know, if you feel good, of doing anything, you should do it, irrespective of what community or what people, what society say about you, right? So the the time is gone already where, you know, people judge you and people people will actually, you know, they are going to judge you anyways, irrespective of what you do or what you not do. You know, even if you are so much pious and you do and you follow everything and you are a law abiding citizen and whatever you do, right? You know, people are still going to judge you anyway. So it's better you should you should realize and you should, uh, you know, learn uh, this from the world that, you know, whatever you are good at, you just do it a try and, you know, you just try it and just do whatever you feel good at and uh, just forget about people, what they think about you. Just just leave them, you know, let them think whatever they want to. Just, just focus on your potential and just just you know groom yourself and do whatever you are best at so that's my message for all the women out there and please 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 don't focus on what people uh, talk about you okay so thank you so much so that's my message for all the oh, women okay thank you so much just just identify what you are good at and just polish your skill and just explore the world oh. forget about people we have to conclude it, Nisa. Thank you so much for your presence here and with the wonderful energy. I really like, like your passion towards your work and that, that you are driven by your passion. I am very thankful and honored that Carla today joined us and shared a little bit glimpses about her journey. I want to know her more. I want to uh, interview her more because uh, it really inspired a lot of ladies that age is not a limitation. Mm -hmm. uh, your heart should be young, your passion exactly. should be young, and you want to be a purposeful and want to serve. And you can be a role model for many. And I, I'm, I'm privileged that uh, she mentored me in, in my English language and a little bit that I have learned from her. And even and it's my intention that uh, I learn uh, her from uh, I learn more from her not just the English language, uh, the way she walked, even I don't talk to her much, but the way she walked, I am, I am observing, the way she, she deals with her things, I am observing. So uh, not only for me, you are inspiration, Carla, there are a lot of other ladies uh, you are inspiring and you don't know about that. Thank you. Love you so much. Thank Carla. you for being you, Carla. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nisa, okay. we should connect if possible. I'll let yes, you decide. Yeah, yeah. I'll connect you with her and Aliki as well. <laughs> okay, sure, sure. I would love to, yes. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Okay. Kala, do you want to say something? No, I actually need to you can go. Say that. You, you can say that. Rabia, I love you so much. Mm -hmm. You are so my favorite. <laughs> you want me to say that or are you saying that to me? I have said you. I love you so much. And I, 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 I feel that you also want to say to me. I love you. Um, but 
I really need to go. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay, Carla. It's it's a really honor to talk to you. Thank you so much for adding values in the world and uh, in the people's life. So God bless you guys. Uh, and I just want to end, thank you so much, Carla. I, I just want to end this show with the note that uh, we have to understand. I feel that a girl should, a woman should uh, understand or should have the vision and the courage and the passion. A vision to uh, have a bigger dream to make things happen, like and a passion to pursue it and the courage, uh, the courage to pursue it and the passion to make it happen. Uh, but I learn um, and I was learning and today uh, I learned from Kale that we have to understand there are two powers in us, masculine and feminine. And when we adore our own powers, our nurturing powers, our loving powers, I think we bring, we, uh, we, um, we help others to grow more, I guess. So with the not that uh, realize who you are and what difference you can make. And you are the power if you really know that what powers you have. And you're a power, girls, if you're listening to me. Listening to me. So at the end, I want to say thank you so much, this platform, my teacher and my mentor um, and everybody who listened to me and appreciate me till uh, today. Uh, I love you so much. And I will work um more and more and at the end uh i was i just want to end this note that pakistan zindabad thank you so much pakistan i love you so much that i am your i am i am living in my country and i i am able to do it from my country yes i am pakistani i am south i am from south asia and i'm a girl if uh, i can take take little steps and connect to the world you can also do that Yes. So Pakistan, Zindabad. I love it. Ta-da.